Hey guys, what's going on? This is my step-by-step -step making of sourdough based off the uh, recipe from the regular chef. So I've done about a dozen bakes already and um, well over a dozen. And um, you know, this is the best recipe I've found so far and uh, I've just gotten to get really consistent with it. So I figured I'd document it now while <laughs> I still can. So first off, I started off with 50 grams of mature starter then 80 grams of water and I'm doing an 80 gram 50-50 blend of AP flour and whole wheat flour, just like the regular chef does. Almost everything here is step-by-step -step from what he does. So you may want to just watch his video because he's much better at it than I am, of course. All right, so I like to stir the starter into the water first and then put in the flour and then give that a nice good mix. So the next morning, we're gonna start the auto lease. So you start off with 750 grams of water and then you use up all of your Levan you made the night before. Do a quick flow test and pour in all of the stuff. It's about 200 grams worth. You mix it up, a little whisk, just to make sure it's all fully incorporated into the water. And then you add your bread flour. In this case, I'm using 850 grams of bread flour and I'm gonna do 150 grams of whole wheat flour. So it's still a thousand grams of, of flour, just like the regular chef does, but I like a little bit more whole wheat just for nutrition, not only for the bake, but for myself as well. Then I'm gonna uh, Italian grandma it with the back of a wooden spoon, slowly incorporate the flour into the liquid so it's not so lumpy. Then scrape it down a little bit, make sure you get the underneath side of the dough and the walls. And then once you feel like you've done a good job with that, get in there with your hands. There you go, dig again. Oh, then you're gonna body slam it real quick, making sure you get all the flour from the bottom. And I don't know if you noticed, but when I body slammed that, there was some dry flour on the top surface, which was originally the bottom. So make sure you incorporate that really well. Another body slam. There we go, getting sticky, really tacky, right? Wet hand uh, to pull off the dough from your fingers. And I also use a wet scraper as well. You're not gonna get it all off your fingers, but you know, it's gonna be enough to to save a little bit, right? There you go. So nice and shaggy. You put that in the oven with the light on for about 30 minutes. You clean off your surface. Make sure you're always clean. All right, and you take it out 30 or so minutes later. It's a lot stretchier, right? So now you dimple it, and I'm gonna add 20 grams of kosher salt and 50 grams of water. Now the regular chef mixes the salt and water first, and uh, it's a great idea, but it just never really fully dissolves for me. So I figured, eh. It's kind of the same amount of work, so I'm just gonna go a little lazy and save some energy. So then you dimple it in, and then you start folding it. So you can see what I'm doing here. This is like a quick practice for a stretch and fold. You may wanna do this as well. Um, just, you're gonna be doing a lot of stretching and folding, so you kinda of wanna get used to the, the motions. So you pull a little bit, stretch it up, and then you fold it over a bunch of times. This is gonna be a little bit wet, and it'll start to get really slippery in there soon, like that. All right, just do your best to incorporate as much as you can. Now with all the folding you'll do later, all the salt and water that you just put in will eventually get absorbed. So don't worry too much about that. But just give it nice massages. Enjoy the feeling, it's nice and squishy. Put them in a big little uh, box, big little. Put them in a box and just let it sit for 20 minutes with the oven light on. Okay, so here's our first set of five stretch and folds. So you see I'm kind of pulling a good amount up and then giving a little shaky shake just to kind of help uh, make it more elastic. It is really stretchy here now, but you'll notice it get even stretchier and softer as we go along um, in the, the rest of the sets. But you know, try not to rip it if you can. You, you might rip it, it's not a big deal, but you know, just as much as you can, get a feel for it. You know, at some point you'll know exactly how far you can stretch before it starts to tear. I had a little extra uh, vitamins this morning, so I ripped a little bit here and there. All right, but you go eight times around, all the way around the ball of dough that you had. Okay, so you gotta time it out. Oops, hole. So you gotta, you gotta kinda like, you know, pace yourself a little bit to make sure you get eight, eight good stretches. Now you'll notice, towards like six, seven, and eighth stretch, they, it won't stretch out as much. It'll feel a little bit more firm and ripped like that. <laughs> That's okay, all right? As you pull it, you're building structure, so it is gonna get a little bit more firm as you go along. So then again, back in the oven with the oven light on, 25 minutes or so, and take it back out. And you do that process all over again. I'm gonna cut through this a little bit faster because you know, 
it gets boring watching me. So again, stretch, fold, stretch, fold, stretch, fold, eight times around. You know, it's a little bit shinier, a little bit stretchier. That's totally normal. They want that to happen. Then you know you're building structure when that happens. All right, so cover it up. Back in the oven, oven light, 25 minutes. You know, don't go more than like 45 minutes. I stretch it out a little bit, you know, time-wise. And, uh, you know, don't, don't go too long. Right, but 25 is a good start. All right, I think here I accidentally did seven folds. Or I missed one and I, when I was cutting it. I don't know. All right, and the last set of three, flip it all over. Okay, so all the stretch sides and folds are on the bottom. Okay, so that was set three. Back in the oven, 25 minutes with oven light. Now we're going to do our first set of coil folds. There's going to be two of these. It just looks like a white giant tongue. Oh yeah. So you're basically, you're pulling it up and dropping it forward a little bit. So it folds underneath, All right? There's that big tongue. There it is. Oh yeah. Fold it forward. All right. So that was a 180 degree turn. Now you're going to do a 90 degree turn so you can get the side and then another 180 degree turn here for this first of two coil folds. All right, so back in the oven. There's a huge pattern here you're catching, I'm sure. All right, and this is the final set. So again, stretch up that tongue, fold it forward. All right, there you go, drop it forward, there you go. 180 degree turn, do it again, pick it up, drop it forward. See how much, it's much easier to handle now. 90 degree turn and 180 degree turn here. All right, so for all, throughout all these folds, make sure your hands are a little bit wet. Okay, it, it'll help it um, with the sticking issue a little bit more. All right, so you let it sit, not in the oven, for about 30, 45 minutes or so. And then now we're gonna do our first forming. So, gonna dust the bench a little bit. That's a 50 50 AP and a whole wheat flour used plop it out it's one of the most satisfying things to do now i like to divide it up into three just like the regular chef uh he has a much better eye than than i do so he just kind of eyeballed it I, I tried to weigh mine out and i think it winds up being about 659 or something 639 grams per third yeah something like that you know i'm a little bit ocd so i wanted to just weigh it out even though i'm sure it was still still off all right and here we're going to flip the dough upside down so the sticky side is on the top and I'm doing like mini coil folds here. This is like a pizza pizza trick. I, I've seen a lot of pizza guys use. So you just kind of fold it into itself and then the underside will become firm, right? And then you flip it over again so all the folds are on the bottom. And then I do this thing where I just kind of like tuck and turn, kind of just tucking in the sides to the bottom and I'm turning it with a dusted hand, all right? And you can see it's really, it's really like pliable. It's really nice and squishy, it's, it's, it's dense right still very wobbly which is awesome and then any uh, big bubbles you have there just kind of pop them if you see them obviously there's probably more inside the dough which you can't see and you don't want to stab it so you know if you see any big bubbles on the surface or air pockets just pop those as you go along all right and that's it and you do it two other times for the two remaining uh dough balls and then now we're going to do our final form now with these i stuff them i, I like i like to put some toppings or innings, whatever you want to call it. So coax your dough into the best rectangle that you can make. About a 12 to 14 inch uh, rectangle on the long side is, is, uh, is pretty good. So anyway, just a lot of shaking. Don't squish it down. Don't roll it down. None of that stuff. Just kind of tug at it from underneath. All right. And then it'll, it'll eventually do what you need it to do. All right. So here I'm doing a black olive and, uh, and brie stuffing. So... You know, just kind of top it like a pizza. But, you know, the, the thing you'll see later on, though, is that because now we're, we're topping it like this, right, we're actually going to fold it in. So that side is going to be the top side of the dough. So some of your ingredients might pop through if you uh, if you over if you overform it. You'll, you'll see it because I, I overformed it. <laughs> All right. So you fold the bottom flap up a few inches then you top the, the untopped section. Then you fold the side over into the center of the dough, right? Top every side that you you see is untopped, and then you fold over the opposite side and make a nice little little package like this. All right, and you top it again. All right, you have your dusted uh, banneton. All right now, you take the the 
the edges on the outside and you just fold it in like a paper uh, airplane, just as regular chef describes it. I like to dust my thumbs here because your thumbs get stuck on the sticky side. If you don't, all right, and then you just kind of roll it in like a giant burrito, like he says. Now, yeah, there's a little bit of a, uh, yeah, a little bit of a foreskin there. You may want to just tuck that, stretch that over and <laughs> tuck it. Yeah, don't think about foreskin when you, when you do this. Or, or do, it's funny. All right, and then you do this thing where you kind of just drag, drag it from the bottom. So you're basically putting the sides of the dough underneath, stretching the top out a little bit and sealing that, uh, that seal, that seam underneath. All right, so you dust the top, then you flip it over. You see the seam is closed pretty well and put it in the banneton. That's dusted. You dust the top again. And then you start putting it into a bread bag. So I have a food safe bread bag I got from Amazon. It's freezer safe too, which is kind of nice. All right, you tie it. You got a tie that, that's included. Tweak it, tweak it, tweak it, tweak it. And there you go. You put that aside and you put it in the fridge a little bit later. So here's another one I'm doing. This is going to be for a bull. All right, so this is a shishito and Asiago cheese one. So again, you top it like a pizza. This one, I drizzled some uh, some garlic olive oil and rosemary olive oil in there, right, just for fun. All right, so fold it up, do a little bit of a, uh, you know, left to right or right to left, depending on where you're starting or sitting. Stuff it again, fold it one more time. And very similar to the batard, right, you're going to take the, the further edge and stretch it out while widening it a little bit. All right, then you're going to stuff it here. But instead of making the paper airplane folds, you're just going to roll it all over to the other side all right so again looks like a giant burrito there deal with that you know that that that, that four foreskin mm -hmm. again all right and then start dragging it i should have dragged it from the the end not the side like that i should have dragged it from this point all right so tuck it in 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 roll it all right and now you're gonna shape a ball all right so i do my tuck and, and turn a dusted hand so it doesn't stick that was, a, that was a satisfying tuck right there. I enjoyed that. All right, just keep tucking it, keep tucking it, and then it'll seal that bottom. Do the same thing into a, a dusted banneton. There you go, some more dust, bag. All right, tie it up, twist, twist, tweak, twist, twist, tweak. And this final one uh, is, gonna, is a roasted garlic and crispy rosemary. And then uh, just do the same process again. And this is going to be a batard again. So there's a paper airplane folds. All right. So with my, with my garlic and the, the crispy rosemary, I basically, instead of oven roasting it, I put it in a shallow uh, saucepan with a bunch of olive oil. And uh, I just kind of uh, cook it in there at a low heat. And, um, and the, the rosemary eventually, the fresh rosemary will eventually become crispy and your garlic will turn golden like that. All right. And you kind of go through the same process. Some garlics were sticking out again. That's what happens when you top it this way. So I, I, I got to figure out a way to top it better or stuff it better. But that's basic, uh, basic method there. All right. So for the 12 hours later, I went 12 hours with these. Take it out of the bags. All right. You dust your uh, your peel. There you go. Shake off or dust off any excess rice flour that was on there because it's a little bit cakey. A lot of moisture develops overnight. So you want to get rid of that and put some fresh flour on top. I'm using butcher's twine here to just kind of mark my uh, my X. Somehow I usually mess that up, so marking it made it a little bit easier for me. And you just take a, a blade and just kind of cut through. You can use a llama if you want. I, I don't like the llama because the, the blade is curved and I have a harder time working it. So I'm just going to go and you know freehand this, uh, this blade. But be careful. You'll bleed out before you even know you cut yourself with this thing. This is so sharp. And it's so light, so you, you don't think it's very threatening at all because it, and it's flexible. But uh, yeah, it'll mess you up pretty bad. All right, so I'm using the uh, the combo cooker uh, by Lodge. And um, you know it was, it's been preheating in the oven at 500 uh, for about 45 minutes or so. So you put the dough in there, cover it up. 500 degrees, 20 minutes. This is the best part, all right? And then you leave it in there for another 20 minutes, dropping the temperature down to 450. All right, and 10 minutes into that second half, uh, turn the pan a little bit so you get some even even browning. So here's a batard. I'm just going down a little off-center slash and doing a little decoration. I'm still working on decoration, so these don't turn out that great for me, but you know, 
keep trying, keep practicing. So I'm making a leaf or a vine and just doing some random scoring here, just really just to flex, uh, you know, how I'm ambidextrous. And then, uh, <laughs> there you go. Bread two, toss it in there, same process, 500 degrees, covered. 20 minutes in, uncover it, enjoy the view. Ah. Right, drop it down to 450 for another 20 minutes, turning it halfway. All right. And then of course, bring your oven back to 500 before you put the next bread in. And uh, you know, they'll you know, give it another 30 minutes or so to go back up to 500. And again, same thing, this is batard. And um, I lied. Yes, it's batard. <laughs> uh, scoring it a little bit. Again, trying to get fancy. Same process. Again, this is the garlic one. All right. Then stick it in the oven. 500 degrees, covered, 20 minutes, uncover it, enjoy the view. Notice that garlic hanging off the front there. Nice. That's a good ear. That, that ear went, did pretty well. All right, then an extra 20 minutes at 450, turning it halfway. And this is the final product of that bake. All right, nice and caramelly brown, okay, with some charred uh, edges on the ear. Right, that's how regular chef uh, describes it, and that's what I'm always going for. This probably could have stayed a little longer, but you know, I get paranoid. All right, so that's it, guys. This is the first loaf. This is the olive and asia, ooh, olive and brie. This is the uh, shishito and um, asiago, and this is the roasted garlic and crispy rosemary. So, follow the uh, regular chef's recipe. Um, it's the easiest one and the most consistent one I've found. And he's a really cool guy too. He responds to your messages and everything if you have any questions. So enjoy guys, take care.